Okay, Algebra 1, 2-4, equations with variable on, variables on both sides. Let's start off with just a very basic example. This is going to be example number 1 in your text. Let's see, 2 plus 5x equals 3x minus 6. They used k's. Um, when I write, I don't write k's very well, so I went ahead and decided to use x. So now we see that we have x's on both sides. And when we get down to the end, we want it to be x equals something. So we need to move all the x's on one side. I'm going to highlight the x's. And what we want to do is we want to combine them. There's, um, there's a saying in, in math, we want to put like terms together. Those are both like terms. So how do I do it? Remember, if I'm moving one thing to one side, I have to do the opposite operation. So I have to look at the 3x, but I can't see it as 3 times x. I need to see it as a positive 3x, because I want to move that 3x to the other side. So how do I move a positive 3x to the other side? I'm going to subtract it. And that's going to give me 2 plus 2x equals, you'll notice on the right-hand side, 3x minus 3x. That cancels. So I'm left with 2 plus 2x equals negative 6. Now this is just a multi-step equation, which is what we did on Tuesday in class. And so... I'm going to try to find the third wheel. What's, what's not connected? And this 2 is not connected. It's positive. So I'm going to subtract it from both sides. That cancels. That gives me 2x. Now be careful here. On the number line, if I start at negative 6 and I go two spaces to the left, that's going to give me negative 8. So negative 6 minus 2 is negative 8. And this is a one-step equation. We're going to divide both sides by 2, ending up with x equals negative 4. So if I took that negative 4, I'm going to write that over here. I'm going to take a couple seconds to go back and check this. That's going to be 2 plus 5 times negative 4, and that's going to be 3 times negative 4, minus 6. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20, so that's going to be 2 minus 20. That's going to be negative 12 minus 16. Uh, excuse me, not 16, 6. correction there. And that shows me that both of them come out to be negative 18, which means that checks. So my final answer is x equals negative 4. Okay, let's look at our second example. It gets a little, gets a little more intense. Uh, I've thrown a fraction in there for you just to show you uh, how to work through this one. Uh, we have to remember some basic rules from pre-algebra, and so we've got to eliminate those parentheses first. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally tells me I've got to get rid of parentheses before I can do anything else. So this is not only going to be a equation with variables on both sides, it's also we're going to have to simplify it before we even get there. So remember distributed property takes the 6 and it multiplies by everything on the inside. So that's going to give me 30x minus 18. Now, here's where some of us um, don't like that fraction, but we're just going to go over here, and we're going to take 1 third times 24. Remember, we can cancel diagonally, so that 3 is going to go into that 24 8 times. So that's going to leave me with 8. 1 third times 24 is 8. Don't forget the x. I want to bring that down as well. 
And then I also want to do 1 third times 12. Again, I can cross cancel. That 3 is going to go into that 12 four times. So that makes my starting equation as 30x minus 18 equals 8x plus 4. Again, personal preference. I like to highlight the variables because I know what I'm going to, that tells me what I'm going to start with. Find the smaller one. X is obviously, 8x is obviously the smallest one. So since that's a positive 8x, I'm going to subtract it. That's going to give me 22x minus 18 equals 4. They've given us a, a nice whole number on this one. Now I want to get rid of my third wheel. My third wheel is the negative 18 because it's just kind of by itself. To get rid of that negative 18, I'm going to add 18 to both sides. Let me scroll down just a bit. That negative 18 plus 18 is going to cancel, leaving me with 22x equals 22. Final step. And x equals, that's not a very good equal sign, 1. Okay, a lot of steps in this one. This is why I've been asking a lot of you um, who are used to just doing the work in your head to please show your work because it's very, very important in the end. Okay, so x equals 1. I'm going to do a quick check. 5 times 1 is going to be 5, um, excuse me, yeah, 5 times 1 is going to be 5, 5 minus 3 is 2, 6 times 2 is 12, over here 24 times 1 is 24, plus 12 is going to give me 36, so 1 third times 36, that does give me 12, so I know that that will check. And that makes me happy. Let's take a look at one more. I know the lesson's just a little bit long tonight, but let's go one more. This is a great one to end on. Um, actually, I'm going to end on two. This is going to be a little longer than I thought. Because there's two specific instances we have here that we have to discuss. So let's go ahead and... And get through this one. We've got 5x plus 5. Let's do our distributive property over here. 3 times 5x is 15x. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. And then that negative 10x is not inside the parentheses, so I don't have to multiply it by 3. I want to go ahead and combine these like terms because they're on the same side. So I'm going to go 5x plus 5 equals 15x minus 10x is 5x minus 12. Now, here's my situation. I have the exact same thing on both sides. So no matter which one I take, if I subtract... They both cancel, which leaves me with an answer of 5 equals negative 12. Obviously, 5 does not equal negative 12. So what this tells me at this point is that there is no solution. which means there's not a single number I can put in there that would make that work. And so on the other hand, I want to do another example, which is going to, um, which is going to come out just a little bit differently. Let's go with 3 times 2x minus 1.
let's set that equal to um, actually I need a I need a minus seven in there okay I went ahead and put the whole thing up there to make that a little bit easier let's do our distributed property we are going to take three times two x which is going to give us six x and three times negative one which is going to give us negative three So now I have some like terms over on this side that are just numbers. I want to go ahead and put those together. And what you will notice in this case, if I subtracted the six X's, that we come out with something that is true negative 10 is equal to negative 10. What this means is that I can put all real numbers as solutions. Okay, notice the difference. If it does actually equal itself, it means I can put any number into the equation. Going back to the other one, if it doesn't equal itself, I can't put any number in. It's no solution. Okay, so two different examples with just a little bit different answers. Okay, a little bit lengthy tonight, about 12 minutes, and uh, you guys should do quite well.